I'm about to show you exactly what happens when you try to build a real website using Replit without knowing how to code. Confession, I know how to code. But to make things interesting, I'm not allowed to use any of my coding skills. I'm gonna share all of the lessons that I've learned that will save you hours of frustration. Let me start by explaining vibe coding. So essentially vibe coding is where you use AI to help you to write an entire app. You don't need to know how to code, you essentially put in all of your requirements, everything that you want the app to look or your website to look into AI, and then it outputs workable code. You'll then use it to add features, debug, and eventually launch your application. In theory, that means that anybody without any coding experience can go from prompt to product just like that. Now products like Replit allow you to do the entire process in one environment instead of copying from let's say Claude or ChatGPT, putting it into an IDE and going back and forth. In fact, Replit will also allow you to deploy the entire project so you can go straight from prompt into a released product that people can actually use. So that means you don't have to worry about dependencies, you don't have to worry about code, you don't have to worry about hosting, copy pasting, you don't have to worry about managing servers, none of that. You can do everything within Replit. But before we even use Replit, we kind of have to understand how the pricing works. This is gonna become something very important. Essentially, Replit works by using a credit system. So what you do is you pay for a certain amount of credits and those credits are used in the development cycle. They call these credits checkpoints. Now, instead of charging per prompt, they charge per checkpoint. So if your prompt requires multiple steps, these multiple steps can be combined into one checkpoint. But now, sometimes if a prompt is too complicated, they will split the request into multiple checkpoints. So one prompt could be one checkpoint, one prompt could be 20 checkpoints. It really depends on what's being put inside the prompt. So I'm gonna be honest, I'm a huge believer in AI, but I'm still very skeptical that we can use a prompt to go straight into a fully fledged product. So why don't we jump right into it by signing up for Rep. So the sign up process is very simple. Select your package, put in your email, and you're good to go. So now that we're in, we have the default interface. It looks pretty similar to ChatGPT with the main chat function in the center. And later, once we get into actually building the application, the interface will change slightly. Our first step is we gotta figure out what do we wanna build. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a simple website for a personal trainer. So now that we know what we wanna build, we need to define our requirements. These requirements are what Replit is gonna to use to build out our initial application. Essentially, we're just telling AI, this is what we want you to build. So for this, I'm actually gonna use Claude 4.0 to help us to generate the requirements. So let's use this prompt and perfect. Now we have the requirements that we can put straight into Replit. So now that we have our requirements, we can paste this straight into Replit and let's start the process. So one of the first steps that Replit will do once it understands your request is it's gonna ask you if you want to include additional features. So here's the tip, don't do it. The reason why is you're trying to keep your initial build as simple as possible. I've found that when you give AI, whether that's Claude, Replit, Cursor, doesn't matter, when you give them too many steps at once, they often have a tendency to make more errors. It's best to start with something base and then build each feature gradually. So we're gonna just completely ignore any of the additional features. So one of the best things about Replit, again, is that it'll install all of the dependencies. It's gonna take care of launching a server for us. If it's using any node dependencies, any dependencies, it's gonna install it. We don't have to know about any of this, which is really amazing. Because again, remember, we're vibe coding. Now, as it's starting to build, as you can see, it's starting to make checkpoints along the way. Remember, each one of these checkpoints costs us credits. And the initial build, it could take anywhere from a minute to several minutes for the initial build. During this iteration, you can kind of see the logic that it's going through. It's telling you about things it's understanding. If it encounters errors along the way, it'll actually try to correct those errors all in one go. Now that it's finished, we can see what it came up with. Well, um, so I guess our prompt wasn't clear enough. It decided to build a website for a personal coach instead of a personal fitness trainer, you know, I'm just gonna say that's user error. No problem, that's something that we can fix. Now, here's where most tutorials stop, but we still need to make changes because this design isn't what we wanted. So we're gonna keep going. 
And this is where we can really put those vibe coding claims to the test. Let's start by changing our design to a personal fitness trainer. Perfect, so this is great. Now we still need to make more changes. Remember, we wanna make our site look more like this website. We can actually use one of Replit's powerful features. By taking a screenshot and pasting it with our prompt, Replit will know exactly what it is that we're trying to build. Now Replit is gonna use our prompt and that design and try to make the website look closer to the design that we gave it. It's gonna use it as inspiration. Now you can be very specific. You can say, I want the website to look exactly like this. Or you can say, I want you to combine the design you came up with with the design this one came up with and make a better design. Really, the choice is just up to you. So now let's take a look. Okay, um, this design looks okay. Not crazy about the colors. It's not exactly like the last design. Again, we just wanted it to be inspired by that design. So that's fine. This is actually good. If you look, it even included the coupon header, which is nice. Okay, so I think what we want to do is let's try and change the color for the hero background because I'm not really, I don't really like it. So now that we've been working through this, we made a few simple changes, a few simple corrections to see if we could get, you know, a better design. Let's take a look at the final product. I'm going to be honest. This is a very basic website, but it's not bad for a completely custom website, not built using, you know, WordPress or anything else like that. And I'm sure we could probably get it to look much better if we just kept going. So it does look like you can make a pretty basic website, vibe coding in Replit but you still need to think like a designer and a developer to get the best results. And the real scary part is this is only the beginning. So I'd love to see where this goes in the next six months to a year. So it's great for something that's basic, but I'll be honest. I do believe that if you try to build anything more complicated, things that require proper security, it would be very difficult to be able to figure out exactly what to do and how to build it if you didn't have any development experience. So while vibe coding is great for some simple things, I do think right now at least, there's still some limitations. So now that you've seen that you can actually build your own business website, you're probably wondering what else you can build with AI. Well, if you're interested in learning more, then you can click right here.